Hey guys, Kandu from Nomad Airsoft, OAO, always a pleasure. Uh, as you can see, I finally got the patch in, very happy about it. I found them, they were on my face. Um, for this video, I just wanted to give just a quick, hopefully, rundown on my kits, going from my M4 loadout to my AK chest rig. I have been running AK since about November, and I'm a little rusty when it comes to M4 now. Uh, so if I do a reload or anything like that, please forgive me. Uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about click hero setups and how I run that. And just making belt rigs and chest rigs and click hero rigs uh, work for me as opposed to me working for it. Now, this rig is from Emerson. Uh, as we can tell, it's based off of a real steel product. I got the flat pack there as well. Do a little tourney for you. I got this rig about a year ago, and actually almost two years ago, and I love it. It has everything included when you do buy it. It has extra uh, adapters for running from M4 uh, style magazines to some more DMR like a SR25s. Uh, it's got Velcro everywhere for a chest rig, it's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna give a quick loadout, lowdown on how I run it. So as you can see, move the front guy out of the way. I have three M4s uh, recently painted by me. So that's always another tibet. Uh, so I run three along the back for my left hand reloads and or right hand reloads and then I have one on the front for my opposite hand when I'm shooting left hand I can reload that way pretty easily. Uh, generally in the dangler pouch for people who smoke on the field this will be a lifesaver when it comes to the nighttime. I run this lighter, it's digital, it heats up, it glows as opposed to a spark and a huge flame and all that shit. I mean, I'll be like advised, probably don't want to run anything like that at night, like lighter wise or anything like that. You'll look like a freaking beam of light on, a, on some nods. Um, I also run, and right now, a uh, spray grenade, nothing fancy. Uh, usually I'll have snacks tucked into here as well. Uh, as you can see, I got a little Velcro spot with some uh, elastic bands, so I'll put like hot rods, uh, some little snacks like a cliff bar or whatever, tuck them in there, and then that way they're out of the way when I reach in to grab my grenade. Uh, sometimes I'll put a suppressor in there as well, um, which you can see in a bit. And then in the front, I usually have an extra flashlight. It cannot stress enough carry an extra flashlight. If someone is looking in their backpack or something like that and they need a light, the last thing you need to do is carry your gun and like point in their face. That's just not discipline at all. Carrying a flashlight, it doesn't have to be crazy bright. This one's flashing. It doesn't have to be crazy expensive either. I found this in an attic. I normally run EOD, so I also carry multi-tool. Uh, Anything outside of that is usually game specific. But that's basically the features of it. I also run HPA. I got uh, the hose usually comes through the pack and then under. I didn't want to set that up for the video, but I do have the whip of the Beofang, uh, UV5, something like that. Uh, I love it. I have it run inside the rig between all the Velcros with a push -a talk. And I'll either use for any setup. Uh, sometimes I run a helmet. I am in the market for a new one. Uh, I just find them too small. So I run Earmore uh, PTTs. I have a battery in there, an external battery for uh, counterweight purposes because I do sometimes run a GoPro. Uh, and then we got the kill light and, you know, save me from an avalanche. That's why I run for a helmet or I'll just run the separate headset because it's fucking hot out and we know how that goes. Sometimes I also, depends on the game, if it's a game that I know that I'm going to be heavily on uh, the radio systems, 
I can sometimes swap out this flashlight for an extended battery because uh, people's batteries always die when you least want them to. I also have a tourniquet. Pretty easy to, to deploy. It's, this one's made from Shadow. There's so many games out there that supply these. Uh, Forest Recon and Black Cell games generally have them available. I usually have it right up front and center so when someone comes to medic me they see this and they can rip it out put it on me this is pre-covid mind you nowadays it's a rope and you gotta tie a noose around your neck or something my battle belt lift this bad boy up uh, i do normally run a glock and two m4 mags with pistol uh pouches as well and then also do have a spot for a extra M4 pouch or magazine. I currently have a tourniquet in there. It does work quite well. Again, pull the tab. And this is more so for when I, like if they allow double tourniquets, it's a good spot for it. Or for whatever reason, if my belt or my chest rig is off, I know I have a tourniquet and I'm in a field and I'm still effective if I get shot down the first time. Uh, I also have a small pouch here. Generally just kind of carry stuff like a small cell phone, uh, my boo-boo box, just little band-aids and stuff like that. Nothing extreme when it comes to uh, first aid. I'm not trained in that, but there's so many people on the field that are that I play with and game refs are also usually trained, so I leave that up to them. Uh, I do also have a dump, uh, dump pouch. I don't use a dump pouch, I always re-index. And that is a real quick loadout on this guy. So, play carriers. Now, I know what you're thinking. Holy crap, that was quick. Power of television, man. So, as you can see, I got a play carrier on. I have a backpack attachment. It is also for my HPA M4 system. Uh, not a whole lot of gizmos or gadgets on this thing. I do have a dangler as well. Usually, yet again, for a grenade, I can put snacks in there. I got suppressors in there usually. But when I'm running my plate carrier, it's generally because I know I'm gonna get slaughtered. Pretty much. Uh, the start of nightfall will be the time that I put this guy on. And my objective is to get into a building quick and dirty, hence why I don't have anything on the front. I do have a couple of glow sticks. Uh, I put them on there like from two years ago or something like that. Uh, did turn out to be handy uh, in some cases, but I got the tourniquets up here. Uh, again, very quick and easy to deploy for when I need them. I have cummerbund systems. I don't really use them often. They're great if I need to put water bottles which is generally what the, the only thing they're used for. I'll put water bottles in here, or I'll put uh, my comms here, and then have my comms run through all the Velcro, and then have it attached generally about here, so it's out of the way, my shoulders and everything like that, and it's easy to talk to. As you can see though, when it comes to the difference from your, your rig, whether it be a chest break or a play carrier, it has to work with your belt. So I have my dangler, nothing belt wise is up here on the side, do that. Nothing in my cummerbund area is gonna affect my belt. It is 100% smooth and flat. Unlike me, I'm a little chunky. This side, pistol again, nothing's affecting it and the backpack Nothing is touching it as well. One more rig to go. All right, again, I'm really quick at getting dressed. So this one is my Emerson rig for my AK. I have, as you can see, another Biofang. Turn it on. Frequency mode. I got the shoulder mic here. I know it's not on my shoulder. I just like it there. It's more so of a recon purpose at the moment. So that way if I need to talk to someone, which isn't often, I can pull it off, talk the way I need to or whatever, and then I just clip it on 
everyone's happy. Uh, kill rags. I know someone posted about always losing their kill rags. Always put it in a spot that you're just familiar with. Um, generally, I do put it in one of the front pockets of my combat pants. I'm wearing jeans at the moment, so I'm not going to demonstrate that. With this rig, however, I do like to have it readily available right here. This rig is amazing for the price point it is. I think it's like $80 or something like that. Um, but again, I have another Springer grenade here. Uh, and then on this side, I usually, there it is, mouth guard. It's kind of a key thing if you don't wear a uh, face mask or anything like that. Um, I know I'm gonna damage my looks one of these days, but at least I got this to help me with that. And that generally just kind of stays there. But for uh, immersion based games like Black Lines uh, events and stuff like that, where they want, where you kind of go more real steel and stuff like that, if I'm coming to a situation where I need to put on a rig within five to 10 seconds, like they advise, this would be kind of the rig, probably without this guy, because it's a little clanky and whatnot. Kind of still working the kinks out of that one. But this would be my setup and it is super quick and efficient and absolutely love it. Let's go back to the original chest rig. Oh man, what a rush. Alrighty, so back to my original chest rig. Now I have my M4 out. Um, I did get a new sling, thank you for asking. It is from, uh, made by Jake from uh, Crywolf. Uh, he's been at this a long time, a lot of prototypes and such and all that crap. Um, his Instagram handle is seam underscore reaper underscore solutions. Uh, maybe I'll put it down below or something like that uh, for you all to read. But uh, I haven't had a lot of time to like actually like run and gun, get in the field and like, actually get a lot of movements out of it. Uh, so far, I do like it. It's a very simple, it's got double tabs on it, easy to pull apart, and then it's got a pull for getting nice and tight to your body. And so far it just likes to cuddle, it's really nice. Um, I haven't fully gotten it set up on my, on my rifle yet, uh, so bear with me a little bit on that one. But this video is not about that, but shameless uh, shout out, love you buddy. So. This is my rifle, this is my gun. It's uh, HPA, so it's not gonna fire. Uh, safety's off, no battery, nothing. That's why I'm not wearing iPro. Um, it does have a detachable suppressor. Uh, thank you, Colin, for making this beauty work. I absolutely love it. Just pull the tabs up from there, slide it off, slide it back on. I'm leaving it on, it looks cool. Um, but just, a quick note, because I showed it on the other rigs. This rig also does not affect my belt at all. Like, my pack sits nicely beside where the M4 pouches go. And again, it's I'm not struggling to use it. It carries the things I need. And you know, sometimes I need to carry a pen or something like that, a marker. I'll just put it here, or glow sticks if I'm if it's becoming nighttime and some nod guys need to me a throw shit and that's kind of it for that so running a primary and a secondary it's it's an argument that I've heard over the past where some people are like well why would I carry a sidearm when I know my primary is golden and fair I absolutely love my M4 Colin Brink aka Techhead did an amazing job HPing this beast for me uh, also known as the mule um, it's from Narco of 2021. Uh, Pete, I'm sure you'll uh, share the story on that one since you have the best view of that. But sure, your gun can be an amazing performer and all that good stuff, but you can run out of air, you can run out of batteries, run out of magazines because you're trigger happy, you're all pew pew. So I always carry a sidearm at all times. If I don't have my this rig on, with, with my rifle, I can't use either or without it because it's HPA. 
So it has to be a, fault, a solid unit. If there's a time where I'm having like a little bit of a break or whatever, I take my rig off and someone attacks CP, I at least have my sidearm always on me. Always. It's a beautiful thing to have. It's not a crazy system. It's a WE Glock. Uh, MIG is in it for safety's sake. There is no BBs in it. There is no BBs in the pistol either. You can kind of see the light. It is, there is some green gas in this. Uh, I was do, doing some reload drills earlier today. I couldn't help it. But a big thing is um, people just think running a sidearm isn't uh, key. I think it's a very valuable thing to own and it's up to you to really decide if you want to run just a primary or a primary with a secondary. When it comes to CQB, this gun does have a small rail, nine inch, as, uh, as Brad would know, but I also have a full solid stock on it, which does make this fairly long. Now, if I'm going into an area like PRZ, where they have a bunch of little rooms and rooms, they, they don't really allow a lot of this full length action, which is fine because then I can pull my rifle back, drop to a sidearm, and I'm good to go. Now what you just saw there is how I would drop from a primary to secondary. I, like, yes, you can throw it, fine, have at her, but if I'm in an area and I'm clearing and they don't know I'm there, I'm not throwing it around, I'm not janking on my neck or anything like that. I can also sling it like that, fire, fire, but I always put it away. So that's kind of a big thing for me is to not throw your rifle everywhere. Um, a key, key element is surprise when it comes to airsoft I find, uh, especially at places like PRZ. If they don't know you're there, um, keep it that way. So if I'm clearing a room, also there's no battery in this as we discussed earlier, if I'm clearing a room and I'm getting into a smaller area, sure, you can bump your gun like so to get a little bit tighter, but some buildings like uh, the college from Exeter, God rest its soul, um, government buildings generally have really wide built uh, doorways like hospitals and stuff like that. Um, residential places like a college, uh, they have a wide mix of different door frame sizes residential, especially for like student housing and stuff, have doors as small as possible so they can fit as much in there uh, in the building uh, square footage wise. Just a fun little tidbit. So if you're going to somewhere that is a school um, that does have like a resident area, keep that in mind for your loadout. Hospitals, big doorways, all times. So if I'm in an area and I'm finding myself doing one of these, that's not really comfortable. Like sure, I could look down the sites like this, that's horrible. So instead, if I have to do anything more than that, because the shoulder, the stock is always shouldered, if I have to do more than that, I generally, keeping my forward hand on the gun, drop, and that's nice and quiet. If I need to, I'll go from here and I will tighten my rig and just pull off to the side and go from here as well. So when it comes to reloading, a lot of people like to start the game off with, you know, six mags or whatever on them and then one in the gun and use their dump pouch and, and such. I personally do not um, like that idea. I like to know that if my gun is fully safe, all my pouches are full. You, you feel me? So, Grab from my rig, I got my magazine, I fire fire, if I need to reload quick, I will generally grab from here, note how, how I grip it, right? So, do this again, you got the belt there, I'll grab it like this, with my finger pointed down, so I pull it out, it's like this. From there, as I bring it up to my gun, 
that's just a flick of the wrist. I can drop the magazine nice and loud, and then it just indexes like so. And that is how I reload from the waistband. Now, if you're wanting to be Rambo or uh, Lucas from T-Rex Arms, whose videos I would definitely highly watch because I definitely picked up some stuff from him, a great method I find is if you are in a bit of a, a heated fight or whatever, and you're, and you're shooting and you don't wanna tuck away from cover or whatever to be able to do your fancy reloads, how I would do it, so I'm in a firefight, right? So pew, 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 magazine's empty. I'll put my gun down, switch to my pistol. So it's already cocked. We've already talked about there's no BBs in it. So if I'm in a position where I'm shooting my sidearm and I have to reload, what I like to try to do, doesn't happen all the time, is count the amount of times I'm shooting. So then I know in a couple shots, I'm gonna to need to reload. So before that happens, I'm already going for a pistol. Again, very similar grasping to the M4 mag, where I would grab it like this and do a twist of the wrist, which is super easy. Very similar concept for here. I grab it, finger down, and a twist of the wrist, super easy. So that way, as I'm firing, boom, it's cocked. I grab it. Generally, I would drop it, or if I'm able to, I will palm it. Flip, go, and then back on it, and I can re-index my magazine back to how it was. Let's say the fight's over. I already know this one's empty, but I did re-index it. Then I'll just take my pistol mags. I'll just swap them on a nice quiet moment literally takes seconds to do. Um, it's a good practice. And that's, I guess that's kind of it. Cool. So hopefully that was informative for anyone watching. And by the end of this video, it's not like 12 hours in or something like that. Um, there's definitely stuff I probably missed um, regarding like why I use a whip instead of a small antenna. Um, well, my AK rig, for example, I do have like that rope style uh, antenna and why I have that, <coughs> excuse me, not the Rona, just been talking. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, uh, send me a DM, um, add me to Instagram if you want, uh, and uh, just kind of go from there. But hopefully everyone has an amazing Sunday gun day. Uh, today was great. I got to dust off my gear and play around with a little bit today. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you guys on the field. Uh, stay safe, play safe, and have a great fucking day.